We are live. Bienvenidos and welcome back, familia. If you are in the live chat, I would want to say thank you so much for your patience as we were getting situated with lighting and, and the camera and uh, other things. It's always something <laughs> that, that kind of puts a little delay on it. Even, even if, I, if I set up uh, minutes before, at the last minute, something's like something goes off. So uh, I'm, I'm really happy and so excited to be here. Uh, if you can hear me okay, give me a thumbs up. I want to um, thank you all so much for being here. I know it's been it's a, it's a bit of a long road. We still have one more season to go before we catch up to season three. I'm really excited about season three coming out in theaters, episode one and two. If you haven't already bought, purchased your tickets to go see it, please do so. Uh, I provided you with a link in the description down below for you to be able to um, for you to be able to purchase them there. Um, I can't, I, I've said this so many times, and I want you to, to, to know that I can't stress this enough how important it is that we go and see this on opening weekend. Erica and I are going to try it. Well, no, we are going to go do, we are going to go see it on Friday. Uh, we're going to probably be in the city of Brea. Um, I'm going to take some DVDs, some, some episodes, season one and two uh, DVDs that I have still uh to give away to anyone who, who who's there um so if you know anybody in the sort of like the fullerton brea area uh let them know oh, we're gonna be there on friday uh some people might not even know who we are <laughs> when we get there but we're gonna be handing out some stuff to spread spread the love and and have people take the chosen home with them so thank you all so much for joining us if you haven't already download the angel studio app it's absolutely free you can watch season one and two on your own time if you don't have time to catch up with us um and we're ready to get going. We're ready to get going. Erica's out there in the live chat with you all, spreading some love out there. Um, if you are new, please introduce yourself. Just say you're new today to the live chat so we can welcome you. Everybody is welcome here in the live chat. Everyone is welcome here. Um, we love you all equally. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter where you are. Um, I, I've, I, I, I hope you know that I'm, I get a lot of heat for, for my bio because my bio has been sort of confusing to people who've not been here from the very beginning so people are like you know your bio's confusing are you or are you not a christian and um and the the answer to that question has been incredibly complicated the past few years right um the past two years two and a half years but i'll i'm happy to to say that i've updated my bio down below and i think the bio in the in the in the main channel too and the bio, it just pretty pretty much illustrates my background, where I came from, where I am currently, and the purpose of this channel. And the purpose, I feel, of this channel is so that we can create a nice welcoming space where everybody can feel like family. Those of those people who are lost, who are feeling broken, can find a place here where they can be loved by other, by other Christians just like them. Or if they're a non-Christian, they could still be loved the same way. I just want the love of God to shine through each and every one of you and to shine into other people as you as you join this this uh, familia um so in case you in case you're wondering familia is the spanish word for family <laughs> um and we are a familia here um i want people who may be lost or broken to find a home here to find to 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 come to a center to come to a place where god can find them and uh, i I'm, I'm glad to announce that that has happened several times this happened on this channel where people have have uh, where god have, have found them here um, so I'm, I'm very happy to read all your comments. I'm, I'm glad that you all are enjoying these, these episodes with me. And there's so much to break down. So we, we are going to watch season two today, episodes one and two. We will play episodes three and four by ear to see whether or not we come back later. If not, we're going to take a break today and then we'll come back tomorrow. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So, all right. If you're ready to go. Let me see some. Uh, let me t let me show me some dancing emojis or some fish to let me know that you're ready to go, so we can get this uh, get this road on the show. <laughs> By the way, I sometimes say things backwards, or I say things that that don't make sense, and I say them purposely. Okay, you'll know when I don't say them purposely because I go back and I I laugh at myself. <laughs> uh, but I appreciate you all being here. Okay, cool. So, and live. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, uh, Ms. Norris. You are ready to go. We have Annie who's ready to go. Crystal Mullen is ready to go. Tracy, perfectly broken, is ready to go. Becky uh, is ready to go. By the way, Becky, um, I am incredibly moved by your story. Um, I read one of your comments that you left on one of my mess on one of my videos, and my heart just broke for you. I'm I'm so terribly 
uh, sorry for your loss, but I'm also very proud of you for, for being open to, to understanding uh, God's plan and God's, God's timing for everything. It's, uh, I just, I love you for that. So thank you so much. Erica and I were like just in tears uh, reading your story and we, we just want to send you so much love your way. Um, so from baby Ezekiel, Erica and myself, you, you were receiving our love and our, and our, uh, our, our hugs, warm hugs. All right. So here we go. Let's get to it. Uh, same ground rules. It's okay. If somebody has a different opinion, a different idea, as long as they're approaching it with love, we're good. Um, watch your, 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 your comments, you know, swearing. I don't mind sometimes swearing. If you say, you know, in passing, don't swear at me or don't swear at each other because then you will be blocked. You will be removed from the, from the live chat. Please be respectful. If there's a discussion, I'm okay with discussions. That's why that's why I bring up these questions. But please be open, be flexible to to other people's ideas. Okay, listen more than you speak, if possible. So um, I'm not asking you to change your minds. I'm just asking you to be open. Okay. All right, familia. Let's open our hearts and let's take a look at uh, this story. Let me know if you can, if everybody can hear it. Oh, I think I broke Angel Studios app <laughs> what did i do leonardo what did you do it's loading let me let me refresh we might have to sit through an ad again this was made free to you by journey thank you so much <laughs> thank you journey all right here we go look into my eyes do you see fear you come at me with sword and spear but i Come in the name of the God of Israel. Okay, so we're sitting through the trailer of yes! Thunder. Or, I mean, sorry, not Thunder. Right between uh, the eyes. David, I think Did it you is. see that? <laughs> Anyone? Uh, of course not. Okay, then. One more time. <laughs> tally, tally, no, no. I'm trying to protect us from this Philistine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, not that way. <laughs> Come on. This is weird. It won't let me skip Back the commercial. Let me see. Right, Philistine. See, it won't let you. Oh, wait. <laughs> right between the eyes. All right. Oh, of course. That one you saw. Tally! <laughs> Tell me no! I'm coming, girl! Whoa, whoa, it's easy! Shira, Shira! I will bring her home safely. Oh, the music is so beautiful. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's so it's innocent. Almost, Tally, wait, no. There you go. <laughs> I'm almost in love. <laughs> This is interesting because I'm not too familiar with the story of David. The whole be still, right? Look at that. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh boy. Uh, that doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> that does stop. Thank you. Again, gave thanks. How beautiful that scenery is. Wow. Oh, goodness. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I love that. What you have just watched is a concept short or a musical animated feature film on the story of David. I'm sorry, but I can't skip this. It's a talent of the same quality so as movies like Tangled and Frozen. Apologize. This is more than a movie. This is a movement to join people from all over the world to try and make the world's most watched animated theatrical release. You can show your interest in investing by going to angel.com slash David. Growing up in the wild of Africa was the most incredible experience. And it was there that I bumped into the most amazing character of God and fell in love with him. At the same time, I was reading David's story and it just really struck me. On one particular canoe trip on the Zambezi River where you could canoe for days and not see a human being, I was reading the scriptures and I read, I found in David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Hmm. And I thought, how amazing it would be to do a film that would give people all over the world a glimpse into God's heart. We grew up on a farm that had no electricity I only saw my first film when I was 14 years old, and it was such an electric experience. I was blown away by the power of film and the power of story to connect with people and move people. And from that day, yes. I became passionate to tell a story on the life of David. The question is, can a group of farmers from Africa make a global hit that's going to reach the world? This is in and of itself an incredible David versus Goliath story. There's an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And in order oh. to tell a story as big as David, we need people from all around the world to come together. Over the last 20 years, Jackie and I have just been blown away by how God has miraculously drawn talent to us. Now we have the most awesome, high-quality team. Like Nathan Stanton, who spent 22 years at Pixar. Jonas wow. Myron, a Grammy Award-winning musician. Borja Mentora, a Disney animation alumni. Other talent from massive films like Big Hero 6, Tangle, Finding Nemo, Zootopia, Moana, Prince oh. of Egypt, and many more. Our first breakout hit is Jungle Beat, an incredible and beautiful show. On our YouTube channel, we get over 2 billion views a year. We've got 7 million subscribers. We also recently released wow. our first animated feature film called Jungle Beat the Movie. And incredibly, it was on Netflix's top 10 for over two weeks, both live action and animated feature films in the US. We are also doing a theatrical release of Jungle Beat the Movie in China later this year and are in production of Jungle Beat the Movie 2. What really excites me is if you take Jungle Beat the Movie, we produce that for $5 million. And I'd really encourage you to go and watch it on Netflix, to see the quality of movie we produce for that price. And just imagine the quality of movie we could produce on David with the proper budget. With wow. David, we considered the route of engaging with Hollywood, and there is significant interest down that route. But we really felt that from a creative point of view, we need to <laughs> stay the head and not the tail of this project. And it's That's a slingshot, right. like David went with a slingshot to fight for life. We really believe that the strategy and needs to be outside the Hollywood system for it to work. In this vein, we are thrilled to be working with Angel Studios for distribution. Angel Studios did the TV series The Chosen, which has become the world's biggest TV series on the life of Jesus Christ. The Chosen has generated hundreds of millions of views and tens of millions of dollars. We've already got $19 million of investments and need another $35 million to complete this project. We need your help to bring God's heart to the world to the story of David. Go to angel.com slash David to show your support for this project now. And let's join together to try and make the world's most watched animated theatrical release. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. I really do, do hope they get the funding for that. That was great animating and a lot of great people who are working on this. I love it. All right, here we go. The 
first time. You know, the first time you were there. Humor me. <laughs> uh, I was out on Andrew Zoltz's loop. I'd had a bad night. At first, I didn't even know it was him. Remember? I thought he was a Roman, about to ruin my life. <laughs> what happened next? It was at the moment when I thought my career and my reputation were about to be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing at his own silly thoughts. Philip just said, come and see. And I did. Look at, it, look at his eyes. Look, I, I don't know how to describe it other than... He knew me before he knew me. Oh. Ah. Oh. I was standing next to John the baptizer. What? Creepy John. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't just let him have his moment, right? <laughs> like out of nowhere. And John freaked out. He said, Behold, I'm eating a new bug. <laughs> he, he was just sitting there. <laughs> Team lunch with all the construction workers cracking jokes. I was uh, on my way to Jerusalem. I'm sorry. All of this is just, uh, it's difficult to talk about. Yeah, it uh, reminds me of how much I miss him. Oh. You have to. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it just... I talk about him to others every day, but uh, it's difficult with all of you. It's, it's different with all of you. Just tell me about the first time you actually saw him. It was in a tavern. <laughs> <laughs> he set his hand on mine, which isn't what it sounds like. Maybe leave that part out to people. I'll get confused. Isn't that crazy? I mean, she has to censor herself. I'm just writing it all down. She has to censor herself just so that there's no confusion about what it she's saying. It's the fourth morning of the third week of the month of Adar. Look at that Sometime beard. Sometime during the second hour. <laughs> it doesn't have to be precise. Why wouldn't it need to be precise? <laughs> Mine will be precise. My answer might not make sense. Try me, mother. I can hardly remember a time when I didn't know him. There's one little kick. <laughs> Go on. Wait, of the rain. Why are you doing all this? Why now? Because we're getting older and our memories are- I mean, why now? During Shiva. Because everyone is here. I need to get their memories. You need to mourn big James. He won't be the last of us this happens to. Who knows when I will see the others again, or if. I'm not in a hurry to write a whole book, but I do want to get the eyewitness stories now while we're together. Isn't Matthew going to write something? He's only writing about what he saw and about what Jesus told him directly. But I was there for things that Matthew doesn't know about. I was in his inmost circle. He loved me. He loved all of you. You just feel the need to talk about it more often. <laughs> I prefer to treasure these things in my heart.
you know that if you try to write every single thing he did, the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. That's right. Hmm. A disclaimer. That's good. I'm going to say that. <laughs> you see, mother, if I do not write these things down, they will be lost to history. James would agree. Where will you start? In the beginning, naturally. I'm just um, not sure which beginning. His birth. Earlier. His ancestry? I'm pretty sure Matthew has that covered. But... <laughs> Maybe the prophecies, the promise to Abraham. I thought about starting with Abraham, but still so much came before him. What was before Abraham? Noah. And before him? A garden. The garden. Well, we could start there. But I wanted to be known that he was much more than what could be seen or, or touched. What was before the garden? In the beginning, the earth was formless and void. I need to move my mic away again. Let me turn the volume down over here on the on the other side. Cannot hear it without thinking of you too. I cannot believe how much he put up with. Is it good there? Others. I turned the volume down. They will not even remember the sound of his voice. Don't just be words. He said they weren't just words, remember? Heaven and earth will pass away. But, but my words, words will never, never pass, pass away. away. They're eternal. Are we talking about the spoken word or the written word? Just curious. Or are we talking about Jesus himself as the word? I think of something. Take your time. I'm off to bed. Uh oh, here we go, Familia. <laughs> you know what to do. Right before you leave, uh, Jackie, you got to dance with us at least. <laughs> there you go, Jackie. Thank you so much. Maybe Ezekiel's dancing too. That's <laughs> oh, all right. We got baby Ezekiel doing a little dance too. All right, here we go. Let's do this. Yeah. I'd rather clean up the hold after a long weekend. Yeah. You drink for a month. I'd rather mend every hole in Abba sales. <laughs> and probably saw your hands together in the process. Yeah. I would rather wrestle a swordfish. <laughs> Just get in the water with it. And then on the hook. But I'd snatch it out of the water with my bare hands if it meant not spending a night with these people. You know, it has a sword on its face, right? We locked out, brother. 
planting this field while the others tried to keep up with Rabbi and Sikar? <laughs> it wasn't luck. He chose us. You're going two thumbs deep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rows 300 apart. So why do you think he did that? We're good workers. And maybe he knows we don't like Samaritans. <laughs> maybe Jesus just likes us best. Yes, that must be it. That, that has to so be it. Do you think <laughs> like best? For the same reasons I like you best. You pose no threat to anyone, intellectually or physically. <laughs> Thank you, <brother. laughs> Wait a second. What I want to know is who are we planting this for? He said it would feed generations. I assume travelers. People passing through like us. Hospitality isn't just for those with homes, John. Don't quit your day job. <laughs> <late for that. laughs> yeah, Come on, let's pick it up. I don't want to lose this job. I would rather talk with Matthew for a whole minute. I would <laughs> listen to Andrew's jokes. <laughs> the car is on the other side of Mount Iba. And the map says to head southward along the east side. It could be this fork taking us towards Shiloh. This left could be too early. That's a theory. It's a fact that we must veer south because if we keep going westward, we'll encounter the hostile city it's of Sebastopol. It's faster to go between Nat Gerizim and Nat Ibal, but more dangerous. Not if we avoid the cities. There's no avoiding cities on a road. That's what roads do. They connect cities. <laughs> You're not taking my daughter off-road. Gaffney, I have given you my word that I will protect Rayma from harm. Can you even protect yourself? Ouch. With due respect. You are walking towards Samaria to find a group of men you do not know. And a woman. A woman who would be with a group of men. Do not talk back to me, young lady. <laughs> this is foolishness. Maybe they know the way. Shalom. Hey, what are you doing talking to our mother? Jew. <laughs> He's like, hey, calm down, man. I was just saying hello. <laughs> uh, is counted 50 in the square with more arriving every minute. Is Jesus ready? Yeah, he's in his room. He needed a moment alone. Well, there are many begging to hear more. He's been talking to people since dawn. He needs a break. I'll bring him some water. I thought most people had left after the first sermon. They left to go get their family and friends, and now they're back threefold. The population of Sikar is approximately 2,000. Not including women and children. There are 12 hours of light per day at this time of year. And Not including day, women and children. Days, over 24 hours, the number wow. of men we need to reach per hour is 83.3333333. At what's point three 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 of a man? Nothing. There's a crowd going out there, and we need to decide what What's to do. What's point three three of a man? Situation and let him decide. That's what he's going to do anyway. I'll tell him. How many stadia wide is the city? <laughs> I brought you some water and. He gone. <laughs> Rabbi. Rabbi. He's like, I, I'm gonna head out. Rubric of how many square cubits we need to reach per hour. They're worried about him Rubik's getting enough rest, and he's not even resting. Cubits per hour. <laughs> His ministry deserves careful thought. No one's thinking about it more carefully than me. Point three three. He's gone. Three of a man is probably not in this room or anywhere in the house. I checked the rest is lost all flesh. He's probably <laughs> not lost. Okay, James, you searched the southern side. Andrew and I will search the north. That thought is to keep an eye on the crowd. What about me? Stay here in case he comes back. <laughs> I will be back soon, and I won't be far. Staying here gives me the greatest likelihood of locating Jesus first. Well, there you go. I, I love Matthew. I feel for him. Right. From the guy, like, the man who arrived here yesterday, he was in the square. Hey, my master, about Yehai. Uh, 
You wouldn't happen to have seen the teacher of this way. He passed by earlier. The teacher? Yes, but is he going to be back in the town square? He's on an event. Where did he go? <laughs> uh, down towards that alley. But I, I was just about to go see him again and bring my friend. He's not teaching again? He'll be there. He'll teach more. And you won't be disappointed. There he is, serving. There. All tightened up. So it was the axle. I told my brother it was the axle. Sometimes all you need is a fresh set of eyes. Now hand me some pitch and it'll be as good as new. You're good at this. You should stay in town and open up a shop. <laughs> <laughs> should I? Mm -hmm. Imagine if you would have shop. <laughs> <laughs> that woman is going to introduce you to every Samaritan in the country. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Hot. <laughs> yes, yeah, Simon, the promoter. Yeah, that's right. Shalom. Shalom. It's kind of like a, a mirror. No, you. For both of them, isn't it? Maybe you're in the wrong place. <laughs> we are looking for Jesus. Everyone is. Oh, you're here. Thomas and Rema, yes? Yes. <laughs> Mary? Good memory. <laughs> so good to have you. It's good to see you again, Mary. <clears throat> this is Rema's father, Kafni. Where is everyone? They're out looking for Jesus. Is he lost? He's never lost. He probably just needed a moment. The townspeople have been clamoring to see him. He's been changing many hearts. I know how that works. So, your friend wasn't just being rude. Oh, uh, Thomas, this is Matthew. Matthew, Thomas. You approached a strange home, and when the occupant answered, you said, I don't know you. Is that being rude? <laughs> We had a brutal journey. It wasn't easy finding this place. And the Samaritans thought we'd be torn apart. Samaritans and Jews are historical enemies. I'm aware. <laughs> we knew the journey would be fraught, but it's like he's actively trying to make it difficult to follow him. I'd have come just to thank him for saving the reputation of my vineyard and your careers. Not that you care about that. Wow. It's not passive aggressive at all. I'm glad we found you, at least. But why aren't you? I stayed. It's likely he'll return to the last place he was seen. A little farther from the city is what I was going to say. But what do you base that on? Isn't it most likely that he's gone on to his next appointment? It does not keep the schedule. Oh, perhaps I can be useful as an organizer then. Oh, I'm good with figures, times. Precision is my specialty. Ah. <laughs> to see you again. Glad you are here. Oh, sorry, uh, it's uh, been a long day. <laughs> we were working. Because we know that God pursues the sick more than the healthy. Think of it this way. Are there any uh, sheep herders in the crowd? I am. Ah, welcome. We are honored you are here. I have a very warm place in my heart for shepherds. Who is tending your flock now? My brother. We're taking turns. How many sheep? One hundred, teacher. Say one of them goes astray. What do you do? I'd go look for it, of course. Of course. But what about the other 99? I'd have to leave them behind. I can't lose the one sheep. Hmm. And if you find it? I'd... Lay it over my shoulders and bring it home. And I would probably do a little dance. <laughs> <laughs> and what would you say to your friends who are worried for you? 
Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. Do you see what he just said there? He rejoices more for one sheep than over the 99 who never went astray. So it is not the will of my father that one of these should perish. In the same way, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Look at them. I couldn't tell Jew from Samaritan the way. Did he, he just say um, it is, it's the will of my father that none of them shall, shall perish? Meaning that God the Father, it's not his desire, it's not his want. He doesn't want anyone to perish, right? Then those who do perish are responsible for their own destruction, are they not? Right? So, how can we... I don't want to say use this, but how can we use this to illustrate that when things, when bad things happen to us, it's not God's will that is making these bad things happen, these... Uh, you know, mis unfortunate events, these uh, like illness and, and death in our families and and uh, failures, business failures and all that other stuff. How, do, how can we use this like to remind ourselves that it's not God's will that we should suffer and perish, that we suffer because of our own decisions or I'm not saying that we are to blame for our disease, our diseases and, and all that, but is... Neither is God, right? Right? Are these things just things that happen? I, I, I don't know. It's something I'm kind of conflicted by uh, lately. Right Not too much, but just cons questioning. Ah, now we see. I love that. We weren't sure what they were doing. They weren't sure what they were doing. But what they did was something that could never be repaid. Did you see the woman and the little girl, though? I know Simon did. Yeah, I always get emotional. You think you won't? <laughs> Shalom. Hey, you came through. <laughs> you made it. Of course he did, Thomas. <laughs> Good to see you. You too, Rabbi. You remember Rema? How could I forget? So you will be joining us also. Rabbi, this is my father, Kapni. Oh, yes. The owner of the vineyard that produced such fine wine for my friends. Shalom. Very kind of you to say. I imagine you want to speak with me, yes? If you have some time, I would like to ask you some questions. You wouldn't be a good father if you didn't. Here's what I'd like to propose, if you approve. We've both had very long days, yes. This establishment has rooms available for you, so why don't we get some rest? And tomorrow morning, we talk about everything. Sound good? I... I'm, I suppose we could. It's a plan. Thank you. We are delighted that you are with us. Now, if you'll all excuse me for a moment, I must go speak with a couple of men who performed a truly remarkable act of service today. Let us escort you, Rabbi. <laughs> if you like. We're here. <laughs> We've arrived. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I was just telling everybody the work that you boys did today, how remarkable it was. You must be famished. Uh, yes, um, we were hungry. <laughs> Eat. Restore your strength. And when you're done, please describe the work to the others. I hope everyone takes note of what John and Big James did here. Good night, friends. <laughs>
Where are we going? I don't know any more than you. Jesus gave them an errand and said, come with. I don't get it either. They describe moving stones and digging. Are they leaders now? I don't know. It didn't sound that much harder than fishing, but... I have never performed hard labor. Guess you just have to tag along like the rest of us. It's <laughs> long. First, there's a leper colony to the west, and they're begging him to come. They're not allowed into the city, so they have no way to get him. Both Jewish and Samaritan purity laws forbid coming within four cubits of a leper. What distance do we have to keep from these Samaritans? We've been within four cubits of a leper before, Andrew. I'm just saying, if he breaks the law, it might cause a stir. And for dinner, we've been invited to the home of the town treasure. And we have to juggle that invitation with another one to have dinner at the home of the high priest of Sikar. Which could get messy, huh? Why messy? Samaritan beliefs are so at odds with Jewish beliefs. He might want to trap Jesus in his words. Don't think he's afraid of being trapped by his words. I'm just saying. We could be somewhere else with people who actually want to listen to him and not argue. If he convinces the Whoa. rabbi of the town, his message would be preached long after we leave this village. Let's leave it to the boss, eh? What do you think? Dinner at the treasure or the high priest? Neither. Dinner with whom then? You know, there are a lot of people who want to talk to him. Yes, but... He wants to make dinner. That's the errand. Yeah, that's the errand. Yeah. You guys are really enjoying this being in the know, huh? <laughs> Coming from you, Simon. <laughs> what does that mean? He told us his plans. So, <laughs> have you. distribute the money accordingly. Thaddeus, buy bread. Enough for 12, 13 people. 11 unleavened rye, sprouted spell. Uh, assortment, your choice. 13? Who are the others? Little James, buy a leg of lamb, including the knuckle and the fillet. No, no, two, two legs of lamb. We only have Andrew, grapes, currants, cherries. cherries, if you can find them. At this rate, we will not have enough. For At the start of this trip, we didn't expect to find a bag of gold, did we? We're putting it to good use. Simon. Yes, please. Message. Of wine. Dan. Matthew, black pepper, chives. Salt, olive oil. This coffee will not make it to Judea. Have faith, Matthew. In him. Mary, look for leeks, garlic, and onions. Message. Okay. What are you guys going to do? We are going to get out of the streets. Why? It's Maria's biggest problem. Too many Samaritans. Mm. Samaria's biggest problem? <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, it's a good thing I don't have a sound machine. I'd be like again. annoying you all with my yeah. sounds. Like boom. three skins of wine, please. What kind? Red, something <laughs> with uh, cloves, I guess. Simon, there you are. I've been looking for all of you. <laughs> Lucky for you, we're all in this market. Oh, what are you doing? Is he going to teach you? Just shopping, if you can believe it. This man. He told me everything, everything you I ever did. did. Yes, we've heard him for ourselves. Because of his words, we believe he is the anointed one. You don't have to keep telling us what you know. <laughs> Here. No, I only need three. It's on the house. Anything for him. Thank you. Simon, I need you to deliver the message. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Everyone? Yes. But there's ten of us. Please. Ooh, look at those plums. Sorry, Abba. It was a busy morning. I'll make you some porridge. What do you think he's doing? I just need a few moments with him. Mm, he said it was a short walk. Or are those so giant grapes? Those are giant grapes. I have things to say. You're lucky I even came out this way with you. I could have just decided no. 
I can't decide what Tomas does. He can make his own bad decisions, but you. Tomas. I have things to say. I know. And I'm very grateful. Porridge. Soon you will know every way to make it. Because that is what you eat when you don't have a job or live with your family. Oh boy. Okay. Good morning. Thank you for your patience. I had a few people to meet before our important talk. Were you comfortable last night? Yes, although I must say I didn't sleep very well. Mm. I know what it's like to be concerned about someone you feel responsible for, but mm. I am not a father. I imagine all of this makes you nervous. Could we? Sure. I love how he started addressing his concerns before he actually expressed them. Just to let him know that he's aware. Allow me to first say why I am here. Beautiful. I want to thank you for whatever you did at the wedding. You kept the reputation of my business and of my daughter and Thomas from suffering. Rema and Thomas have insisted that you performed a miracle. Now, I am an old man. I need to leave for my journey and I do not have time to be unclear. I believe this to be the edge of blasphemy. And I am not in the habit of believing a man from Nazareth. Who? A Stop. man. Performed a miracle. And I am not in the habit of giving my blessing for my daughter to leave our home. But I am in your debt. And that is why we are in this room with you now. Thank you for your honesty. I cannot give you my belief or my devotion. So I'm afraid my honesty is all I have left to give after giving up my daughter. Oh boy. Uh... I understand. I ask a lot of those who follow me, but I ask little of those who do not. Oh. I don't want to be rude, but I have said all I want to say. Oh man, I really love uh, her father here. Uh, first of all, beautiful work with the with. Uh, let me let me switch over to this screen here, uh, so I can show you something. I think it's beautiful work here. How when they move when they move to this location. Let me show you. Here can they sleep are. Sleep very well. Mm. Right when they move to this location, beautiful shot right here. Everything beautifully lit up. Look how he sits. He stands right no, at the door. Why I am here. He stands right at the door there. The beautifully framed, perfect lighting. Reba in the background. You see, your eye just can't help but follow that that line. Oh, I'm gonna go back with this line with Rima, Reba or Reba, Rima, right there. The, then the father, then Jesus, right? It's beautiful, beautiful work. Okay, now I'm gonna just share a quick story. When I when I saw my my real father for for the first time in well over 20 years, I hadn't seen him since I was 16. Um, I was I was upset because he has this way about him that's very direct, right? But he, he's still my father, right? And I'm sitting there next to him in the car because we had a, about a two hour drive. And I just wanted to know as much po as possible about him. And he's, he's like this. Well, actually this man is a lot, a lot more uh, patient and more respectful because my dad just says, says things like it is. Right. And I came to kind of appreciate that. So maybe this might help you with the person that you know in your life. That's like this. My dad, I asked him, I said, do you have to say what you have what you said? Do you have to every single time that you're with your family? Do you have to express yourself in that way? And he goes, Look, I'm gonna tell you something. He goes, I'm the type of person that I would rather you tell me the truth, even if it hurts. I want you to tell me the truth so that it can hurt as much as possible right here in this moment, and then I'll get over it versus you sugarcoating it, 
or softening it up for me so that you won't hurt my feelings and then eventually drag that pain over throughout the course of a few of a few years he goes just tell me how it is right now so it can hurt so i came to appreciate that like this man says look i have business to tend to i have to go i have places to be i have to leave i can't afford to be here so i really don't have time to sugarcoat things he says uh like he, he says so i'm gonna i'm gonna be upfront with you here's here it is jesus appreciated that he didn't take it offensively this is the second time th no not even the second time it's like the fourth or fifth time that somebody says something about a, a nazareth a person from nazareth to his face and made it seem like like dude the place that you come from is trash it's garbage so therefore you must also be garbage you know and he doesn't he doesn't take offense to that. Anyway, my, my point being that if you have people in your life that are, are, are like this, learn to sort of appreciate that, that they, they probably are that, that type, that they want you to tell them the news directly without sugarcoating it. In the same way, they probably expect you to do, yes, what they're going to tell you is going to hurt right now, but in the long term, um, it's not going to hurt for very long if you're, if you're aware that you maybe you're, you know, Whatever, whatever the issue may, whatever the issue is, right? Um, but anyway, okay. So I'm gonna fast forward here a little bit, or go forward a little, little bit. Time to be unclear. I believe this to be the edge of blasphemy, and I am not in the habit of believing a man from Nas. A man performed a Beautiful. miracle. He corrected himself. And I am not in the habit of giving my blessing for my daughter to leave our home. I am in your debt. And that is why we are in this room with you now. Thank you for your honesty. I cannot give you my belief or my devotion. So I'm afraid my honesty is all I have left to give after giving up my daughter. I love that. How his voice breaks it reminds me of my grandfather when he said something like that to, to, to that effect. Uh, to me when he was scared of giving me up uh, to my dad. Um, he says, look, I can't give you my belief or my, or my, you know, I can't follow you. Because basically what he's saying. Like, I can't give you what, what you're asking me to, my daughter to give you. My honesty is all I have left to give you other than to give my daughter over to you, a man who I have n no trust in. I don't know you. You come from a place where nothing good has ever come from. And so this is big. This is a big risk for me. This is a big ask. And I'm not giving it lightly. You know, so if I do this, don't mess it up. Sounds like the conversations I have with my daughter. <laughs> Sounds like the conversations with, that I have with my daughter when I'm telling her, like, I know you're, you're wanting to hang out with friends. I'm letting you hang out with friends. I want you to know this is not easy for me to do because I raised you from when you were a little child and you're very important to me. You're one of the most important things in, in my life. So if I let you go out here, I want you to know I don't do it lightly. So don't mess it up, please. Like I'm putting all my trust in you. Now I'm not just trusting you. I'm trusting your friends. I'm trusting the world. I'm trusting strangers that you might come across in your little journey that when you're hanging out with your friends, like I'm putting a big trust on everything with the, with one of the most precious things in my life. So, so, uh, you know, of course <laughs> I understand this man. I understand this man. Let's go. I understand. I ask a lot of those who follow me. This message but I here. ask little of those who do not. Mm. I don't want to be rude. Look at him, he's still but being I polite. I said all I want to say. Oh, oh it's heartbreaking. <laughs> Oh. I love how he looks up. <laughs> oh. I love this because I, I love the chosen the first time around because I saw so many beautiful things in, with with regards to production, but I'm noticing so much more now and it's so beautiful. All, all the beautiful yes. layers here. Here it is. One good moment. Here we go.
I have long admired you for your hard work. And you have done well in spite of the loss of your father. But this is foolishness. And I won't pretend it isn't. Mm. I will see you next when you ask for my daughter's hand. Kafni, I know. I am not stupid. You may be. <laughs> but I am not. <laughs> but when that day comes, I don't know what I will say. Oh, boy. Wait, because at this point, they're not really a couple, right? Keep her safe. Right? Shalom. Oh, man. Ooh. He said, like, I'm not stupid. You might be. <laughs> but I'm not. Wow. Exactly. Some expert work, my boys. Exceptional. Expert work, my boys. Should have seen this place. <laughs> Weeds and branches piled everywhere. We cleared and sowed it in a single afternoon. Okay, okay, okay. So you told us. <laughs> Andrew. Well done. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Uh, what are we doing here, Rabbi? This is where we'll be dining tonight. Someone lives here. You must be Melech. I am. You're the teacher. I'm Jesus of Nazareth. These are my students. I believe I owe you a debt of gratitude. I would bow, but uh, as you can see, it's John and Big James here that put in the sweat. You own the field? I do. Ooh. We thought it was for travelers. Okay, so spit it out. What's the catch? Catch? You don't know me from Adam. You're a Jew. You come all the way from Galilee to preach in town. You send your students to work my land. Fotina told us you were in need. Mm -hmm. She told me all about you. <laughs> so what do you want from me? I don't have any money. I can't make a donation to your ministry. Can't even feed my family. That's what I want. I would love for you to share a meal with me and my friends. Yeah, I'm really so very sorry, but uh, we don't have any food. Not even for ourselves. He's bringing but the food. I covered. That's beautiful. Please. We would be honored. <laughs> okay, so really quickly, there's a huge lesson in this for us, right? Because I love how all of this, and I didn't even catch this the first time. Everything is starting to be to be uncovered, right? Little by little. We see them plowing the, the ground. We see them, you know, being taking all the credit for the work, the hard work that they did. We saw Jesus praise them for the good work, right? And we saw them being, being given the opportunity to go shopping and to leave the group and what food they need. And they were not aware that they were doing all of that for a Samaritan, right? These are the two that can't stand they're the only ones that so far have expressed their, their very strong dislike for the Samaritans, right? And I bet that if they would have known who they were doing it for, they probably either wouldn't have done it or they would have done it complaining the whole time, which means they wouldn't have done a good job at it. They wouldn't have picked the right good food or wine. They would have like, what do they we need to give, give them wine, right? Their whole attitude would have been completely different. Right. So what's the le what's the lesson here? Right. We have we all have people that we don't get along with people that we don't particularly like some of some some of us have stronger feelings for those people than others. Right. It could be as as light as you know what? I don't get along with them. I would never share a meal with that person. And that's it. Or if I don't see them for the rest of my life, I'm, I'm OK, which which I understand. 
Then you have the extreme of that, which is, I don't like that group of people. Forget them. I, I some want them off of the face of this planet, like to that extreme, right? But here Jesus is saying, look, it reminds me so much of what my grandfather used to say. My grandfather used to tell me, tu haz el bien y no digas a quien. You do what's right and don't, don't go on saying who you did it for. M meaning, just keep it to yourself. Do the right thing. Always do the right thing. It's the right thing to help this man who can't help feed his family, cannot feed his family, to help him plow that, right? And it's okay also. It's a good thing to share a meal. You're not asking him to give you the meal. Buy the meal. Tend to him. Show him that you are not what your what your group of people what his group of people believe your group of people to be right i'm sitting here tattoos on my on my arms brown skin right in in la right holding people holding the door open for people who probably think that i'm some dirty mexican and i hold the door and i'm polite and they look at me like i'm an alien like like oh uh thank you I could I see it all the time. People who wouldn't give me a second a, a second glance, who wouldn't give me the, the a time of day, people that I've had to work harder for to prove myself equal to them because of their idea about my people. That's not right. That isn't that isn't right. So this is kind of moving us to to show us like, hey, just because. Well, I'm gonna quote a Stoic philosopher here, what is uh, Marcus Aurelius, who said. That the best, the best revenge is to not be like them. The best thing you could do for your enemy is to not be like them. They Let them hate you. Let them mistreat you. Let them judge you. But you don't do that in return, right? And say an eye for an eye. No, an eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind, right? But no, this is what Jesus is, is like, is teaching us. Is to do what is right and to do what is good to change people's opinion, not by, by forcing them or by being better in, 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 in the sense of like having success in the world, but by bringing yourself down to, to that level, to, to work the soil, to do something good for them, right? To spread love in that way, to love your neighbor. It doesn't matter if it's your Samaritan neighbor, Samaritan neighbor or not. You love your neighbor, period. End of story. Okay. End of rant. Let's let's move forward. I love that little story. Almost flip. Then the net strained so hard, I thought my arms would come out of their sockets. And James and John took their sweet time coming to help us. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, I had to call for help five times before you moved. So you followed them all the way into Sumeria? We did suggest the alternate route along the Jordan. You didn't think it could be dangerous for you? Of course. <clears throat> when I was a little girl, my father told me the Messiah would bring an end to pain and suffering. If you are who people are saying you are, when will you do that? Hmm. I'm here to preach the good news of the kingdom of heaven. A kingdom that is not of this world. A kingdom that is coming soon. Or yes, sorrow and sighing will flee away. I make a way for people to access that kingdom. But in this world, bones will still break. Ah! Hearts will still break. Message. But in the end, the light will overcome darkness. Speaking of broken bones, what's the story? Uh, I fell off a horse. I didn't see a pasture. Yet, uh, it wasn't mine. Ah, a friend's horse. That's always dangerous. No, not, not exactly. Oh. Look, 
It's not like he doesn't know. <laughs> You've already done so much for me that I didn't deserve. Come, Rebecca. It's time for bed. Let's say good night to your new friends. Good night. Good night. <laughs> no complaining, no talking back. Just good night. That's it. <laughs> if you knew who I am, you would never have helped me. That's not true. This is what we Jews do. We tell and listen to stories. Our stories connect us. Tell me your story. Before he tells the story, before he tells the story, I want to ask you all a quick question, Familia. Jesus already knows what, what happened. I'm sure he knows what happened. He, he said, you've already done so much for me that I don't deserve. Because he's afraid that if he tells him what happened, then he's going to really see just what kind of man he really is, right? And he says, if you knew who, who I was, you wouldn't have helped me. And Jesus says, that's not true. Because that's what we Jews do. That's what we do. Now he's he's sitting there. He's not really teaching, but he's teaching. All right. Like like uh, like I always say, he's not a bus driver, but he's taking us all to school. <laughs> he says that's what we do. His students there are watching him redefine what a Jewish man is supposed to do, what a man of God is supposed to do, redefining it for them. He's saying. What we're doing here is we're looking past the place that you live. We're looking beyond who you are and what you've done and why your leg is broken. We're not sitting here saying, well, that's what you get for doing what you did. It wasn't your horse. So that's what you get. And all this, and, and, and if you don't get to feed your family, then that's what you deserve because you shouldn't have been doing blah, 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 blah. Christ is saying, no, no, no. You're a human being. You made a decision that was a bad decision. But as a as Christ, and I think as Christians, we're to look beyond, beyond what a person does and see a brother and see a sister, a spiritual brother and a spiritual sister, and help wherever it is that we can help. Right? Help wherever help is needed. So if he says that's what that's what we Jews do, what should a Christian do with an atheist? If an atheist said, "Look, I, I don't deserve that you help me. I don't even believe in God." And plus, I've mocked your God, I've cursed your God, I've I've just sinned against Him completely. We, we probably wouldn't even use the word sin, but I've cursed at you, I've hated your people, and I've hated your God. You shouldn't be helping me. What would what would Christ do? What would Christ actually do? We're seeing it here. We're seeing it here. And these people here on to his left are being changed. These people here are being changed. Right? Look at him. Look at his posture. He's looking down. He's ashamed. Yeah. Let's uh let's continue. We ran out of money and food. My little Rebecca, I could see her ribs through her skin. And Hedva. Her eyes turned gray. It been a drought, so there was no work in town. I had a friend in Tiratana who was also in bad straits. We traveled south past the frame and lied in wait along the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. We attacked a Jew who was traveling along, pulled him down from his horse, took all his money and all his clothes. He fought back, so 
Deshaun knocked him down, hit his head on a rock. I thought he was probably dead. Deshaun was to take the Jews' belongings and sell them to bond traders in Anatot. I was to ride north and sell the horse at a Roman outpost. <laughs> but I wasn't on for 10 minutes when she reared up through me, broke my leg. I had to, I had to crawl on my elbows and forearms to the nearest town and beg for a ride back to Sikar, worse off than before. Worse off than before. So he did all that to be better, but he ended up I in a worse situation. What you've done. You helped a, kind of man you a helped. Jew hater. Every day I think about that Jew. Naked and alone on the road, possibly dead. <laughs> I could be a murderer. He didn't die. Somebody came along and helped him. How do you know? Melek. I know. I promise you, he did not die. <laughs> that huge relief. It's easy for one group to look at another group. For example, let's just take Simon. Simon who would say, see, these some, could, who could easily say this. I'm not saying he did say this, but who could easily say this. See, see the Samaritan. See how he treats our people? They're all the same, right? When they're desperate, they go and they hurt somebody, one of us. And they don't care if he died. He probably left them there on the side of the road. He could, Simon could have said this, right? But we have to remember, Simon was also, maybe not, maybe he didn't kill a man, but he was even betraying his own people, right? Out there in the, in the water, right? And, and what I, my point being is that sometimes we have to realize that we all suffer in the exact same way. It doesn't matter if you're brown, white, black, purple. It doesn't matter wh what you are, what color you are, or where you're from. We all suffer in the same way. Sometimes we don't have the food to feed our family. Sometimes we don't have the, you know, a roof over our heads or a car to get to work or work to get to. We all suffer in the same way. So understanding why some people do what they do just to survive helps us be better. It helps us understand their suffering is my suffering. Any one of us could make one choice that will, will put us out, out of our homes. We have to do our best to be more like Christ, not just showing up to church, not just wearing the badge, but Wearing the spirit. Wearing the spirit of Christ. So I love this, this, this story. I didn't even really think that I was going to break this down or to hold off on, the, on this part, but I just really love that. He's feeling undeserving. How many of us do not feel undeserving of God's love and ca compassion? Why me? Why did you come all the way out here? Isn't everyone in town falling at your feet? A shepherd leaves the 99 on the mountain to search for the one that went astray. Even the black sheep. <laughs> right? What do you want? Believe my words. Return to synagogue. Search Torah. I never learned to read and listen to the word read aloud. Mm. And let it affect your heart. See what happens. See what happens. <laughs> Tell what? Tell others. You know the crime I committed? In cold blood? You help someone like me. 
he would. Sí. Sleep on it. We'll be in town for one more day. How could Simon not have been changed by that? She is asleep. We better go back into town before it gets too late. Yes. We never know what sort of men may lay in wait along the side of the road. Huh? <laughs> too soon? Too soon. <laughs> Him. I think he already knew. Yes, he did. May I? Oh! Sleep well tonight, my friend. Thank you for having me. I want to. I want to try something here. We're going to go back just right before this. This beautiful hug. You told him. I think you already knew. Okay, so let's just take a quick moment, Familia. Just take a quick, quick little moment. I want you to think of that thing that you are ashamed of. I want you to think about that thing that you feel bad about. That thing that that brought you to Christ, perhaps. That thing that made you feel like you weren't worthy of His love or anybody's love, for that matter. And I want you to hold it right there in that in in the front of your mind for just one second. Really see it. Don't beat yourself up about it, but just, just hold it there. And I want you to imagine for just one moment that you're holding it in, like physically in front of you. This thing that you did, that thing that you hurt someone or how you hurt yourself or, or something that someone did to you. And the effect that that thing had on you. Just hold it right there, right in front of you. And in a, in a, in a second, I'm going to play, play it back. And I want you to imagine that Jesus is standing right in front of you right now. And he tells you, may I? And he comes over for a hug. And I want you to just drop it. But not yet. I want you to drop it. Drop it and let him embrace you and I want you to close your eyes so it could be as real as it possibly can be okay we are using sort of our imagination here but I want you in spirit to receive that hug in this very moment right here right now so I know your heart is racing right now and I know that you're anticipating that hug but I want you to focus on what you're about to let go I want you to focus on what you're about to let go anger Resentment, pain, suffering, guilt, shame, all of that. I want you to just hold it here. And when I play and you hear his words, I want you to drop it. You ready? Here we go. May I? Sleep well tonight, my friend. Do not pick it up, familia. Do not, I want to pause it here, do not pick it up anymore. Don't pick it up. It will call you. It is going to call you and ask you to relive it, to re-experience it, but don't do it. Don't pick it up anymore. He's called you to let it go. You can't hold that and hold Jesus at the same time. You can't hold both at the same time. It's like wanting the light and darkness to, to be in the same space. Once the light comes in, darkness has no choice but to flee. So, 
uh, thank you for for going along with that. Here we go. I'm gonna hear a joke that I missed the first time around because I was talking like I am right now. <laughs> You're sure this is it? I don't know. This is the address I was given. I'll be honest up front. I only have five extra bedrooms, and two of them are drafty. Naya, they usually sleep on the ground. I think they'll be fine. <laughs> are you sure this isn't a problem? I'm dying anyways. I don't <laughs> need the house anymore. <laughs> Where is Jesus? <laughs> what? <laughs> you have certainly livened things up around here. You got me in a good mood just to fit in. <laughs> yeah, just to fit in. <laughs> Right. One of the rooms is haunted by my dead grandmother. Oh, I'll take that one. <laughs> you know who he is? He's not afraid of ghosts. I might be. <laughs> oh. <gasps> really? What's wrong? Abba? <clears throat> What's wrong? <laughs> Looks like Christmas came early. It was him. It was him. Does that mean that God blesses everyone? Oh. What's so funny? Oh, I just know of a family that's having an unexpectedly good morning. <laughs> oh, Melek. <laughs> What's happening? You don't even have to be there to perform miracles. Don't sound so surprised, John. <laughs> now you'll be given authority to do things I do. Even greater. Wait. I'm sorry. Can you say that again? <laughs> so, how did you sleep? Oh, well, it's, uh, it took me a while. I was a little scared by what Neraya said about this room being haunted. Oh, come on. It's not haunted. Why didn't you correct him when he said it was? I don't address everything at once with new converts, Big James. Message! Well, I'm ready <laughs> I'm thankful before you, living and enduring king, for you have mercifully restored my soul within me. Great is your faithfulness. Excuse me. Oh. Mm. The invitation from the treasurer stands. And the priest. The priest is a high risk. Only if he wants to fight over whose Torah is better. But a great reward if he believes. And don't forget the leper colony. Where are you going? For a walk. We haven't made our plans yet. Whatever the plans will be, I'm sure it will be a long day. And I need some time alone. You need protection. Enough with the protection. <laughs> I'll be fine. I won't be long. But where can we find you? Seek. <laughs> you will find. His riddles. It didn't sound like a riddle to me. If you look for him, we'll find him. That's not what I heard. Oh, yeah? What did you hear? I heard you looked and couldn't find him. <laughs> you guys lost him for practically a whole day, Matthew said. <laughs> he knows where he wants, when he wants. Yeah, well, we need to do better. Can you believe these guys? They dig in the mud and suddenly they're running the show. We just think we need some leadership, okay? 
Security concerns aside, we need a plan. No matter what happens today, the real question is where will we be after we leave here? We'll get to that. That's why James and I have outlined a plan for the next month. Man, Beginning okay. with a visit to the temple. His first appearance there since performing public signs. Oh. A visit to the scribes at Qumran. Two days preaching at Hebron. Hold on. He said we were excellent planners. I'm pretty sure he said planters. He applauded <laughs> our execution. He sent it to the farm teach you a lesson. And we made an impression. Let's vote on it. Sure. OK. All in favor of John and Big James's plan? <laughs> I agree an agenda would be prudent. I'm not voting. Me either. Why not? Uh -uh. New guy. It doesn't matter what I think you should do or what you New guy. Think. All opposed? Well, I'm sorry you feel that way. I, for one, am not okay losing him for long periods of time. I'm not okay arguing about where we're going every day. So don't argue. <laughs> uh, yeah. Going to tell Jesus our plan. The group said to leave it alone. They also said he gets to make his own decisions. So, let's let him. Why do you think he picked us to plant those fields? I'm starting to wonder about that. If yeah. I had known it was a Samaritan. Come there on. it is. Jesus will sort it out. Rabbi. Well, you couldn't wait, could you? Yeah, sorry, we just uh, wanted to clear a few things up, if that's okay. By all means. The Jewish boys are far from home. Yes, as a matter of fact, we are. Shalom to you, too. Here's our traditional Jewish greeting for you. Don't clip the finger. That was a warning. Try it again and see what happens. Quiet, Big James. Shalom to you, too. <gasps> you filthy dogs! I said quiet. Let us do something. And what would that achieve? Defending your honor. They reviled and humiliated you. They deserve to have bolts of lightning rain out and incinerate them. Yes, fire from the heavens. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> Say the word and it will happen. Why not? Good thing he hasn't given them that yet. We shouldn't have come here in the first place. They don't deserve you. There it is. Why do you think I had you work Melek's field? What was I trying to teach you? Obviously, didn't learn. To, to help? <laughs> you think it was just to be more helpful? <laughs> be better farmers? It was to show you that what we're doing here will last for generations. What I told Fotina at the well, and what she then told so many others, it's sowing seeds that will have a lasting impact for lifetimes. Beautiful. Can you not see what's happening here? These people that you hate so much are believing in me without even seeing miracles. Mm. It's the message, the truth that we're giving them. And you're going to get in the way of that because a few people from a region you don't like were mean to you. That they're not worthy? What, you're so much better? You're more worthy? Well, let me tell you something. You're not. That's the whole point. It's why I'm here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rabbi. As we gather others, I need you to help show the way. To be humble. We will. That's amazing. You wanted to use the power of God <laughs> bring down fire <laughs> burn these people up well it sounds a lot worse when you say it that way 
<laughs> you too. You're like a storm on the sea. Come on. Thunder exploding out of your chests at every turn. <laughs> In fact, that's what I'm going to call you from now on. James and John, the sons of thunder. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Today, it was not good. <laughs> but strong passion can be a good thing when channeled for righteousness. I just may have to delay giving you that authority we discussed earlier. <laughs> yep. Or in smaller doses. <laughs> you to calm down a bit. <laughs> James, John, you look terrible. What happened? What happened is that James and John needed to be reminded we're here in Samaria to plant seeds, not to burn bridges. Master, we've brought a guest. I wanted to deliver an invitation to you personally. Rabbi, this is Gershon, the priest of Sikar. Ah, yes. I've heard a lot about you. And I've heard a lot about you. You have blessed this village beyond our deserving. The pleasure is ours to be here. But we cut word today it might be your last day in Sikar. Word travels fast. <laughs> indeed, Rabbi, indeed. Won't you do us the great honor of giving a reading from the scroll of Moses in our humble synagogue? Of course. Uh, I was going to pause it, but we'll just keep going here. Jesus is playing the patient game planting seeds and waiting he knows that people are going to be harsh towards him but he's saying no don't, don't do anything wait just wait just wait it's a hard thing to do it's a really challenging thing to do here they are in proper order Barashite in the beginning Shemot names Vakira and Hiko Bamidbar, in the desert, and Devon, words. I will leave you to make your selection in private. Thank you. Gershon. Uh, yes, Rabbi. Can you send in my disciple John, please? Of course. Five books of Moses, and no more. They're missing out on so much. Yes. But we have to start somewhere. What do you think I should read? <sighs> Maybe Moses striking the rock instead of speaking to it. Or Balaam hitting his donkey. <laughs> Don't torment me. <laughs> About when Moses broke the tablets. Jonathan storming away from the dinner table. Samson striking down the men of Ashkelon. Oh, wait. They don't have those skulls. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I really am open to suggestions for the reading. I love that. I couldn't. After today, after yesterday, I do not feel very much worthy. Who's worthy of anything? Good thing it's not about what people want you? or how they feel. It's about what God feels but about no you. No man, apparently. I'm a man, John. Mm. And yet. I am who I am. Have you made your selection, Rabbi? Rabbi? Almost. Can, can I ask you a question? Can I ask real, real quickly? Because I didn't notice this the first time. But why was that? Why was that pause worthy? Hmm. 
he said, you're, you're a man. He goes, I'm not a man. He goes, and yet you are, right? And yet, and then he says, I am who I am. And he understood something. He understood something. I am who I am. That's it. Hmm. All right, let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm looking Sorry. at your answers, but uh, just almost. I'm getting restless out there. So, do you have a favorite passage from the first five? Um, do you? I don't know. I like them all. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> I suppose I, I love the beginning. Mm. I love how God simply spoke and, and the world came into being. Yes. As David wrote, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. You know, the Greeks use word to describe divine reason, what gives the world form and meaning. I like that. <laughs> and it is a favorite memory. <laughs> a reading from the first scroll of Moses. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the word. And the earth was void and without form. And the word was with God. And the darkness covered the face of the deep. And the word was God. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Boy, oh boy. That was great. <laughs> right, we're going to get ready here for episode two of, uh, of season two. I'd like to thank you all so much for joining us. I love that uh, we get to share this, this, um, these moments together. And let me, let me turn this down. Um, I love that we get to spend this time together and then I'm really glad that I get to ask the questions that I'm asking and that you all are, are engaging in a conversation with me. This is really what it is. This is really about, um, about having this conversation together. I love that we're all learning from one another. I love that we're all supporting one another. 
I love that you all are sharing your 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 struggles as well, and that everybody else is being uh, supportive of one another. So thank you. Please continue doing that. In, in case you're wondering what's going on, if you just joined us for the first time here, we are getting ready for season three. <laughs> Sorry, we're getting ready for season three uh, of the Chosen, and. It's exciting because it's going to be in theaters everywhere uh, on Friday. So in a few days, today's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So in three days, three days, season three released episode one and two in theaters everywhere. And it's important. It's really important that we get to see this in theaters opening opening weekend because then it will determine whether or not it gets invited again. And it'll determine how many more showings they, they will have, which means that the world gets to see Jesus on the big screen and hear his story on the big screen um, where, where it should be, where it should be. So if you haven't gotten your tickets already, you can use the link in the description down below to purchase the tickets. We are watching season one and two. We're on, on season two, episode two, and we're watching from the Angel Studios uh, app or from their website, directly from their website. And uh, where you can find a lot of other season, a lot of other um, series and films. And what's awesome about it is that you get to decide what films they work on in the future uh, by either donating or by voting for what, what gets produced by Angel Studios. It's a great app. If you haven't yet downloaded it, download it, check out some of the stuff and let me know what you would recommend Erica and I watch from the Angel Studios. And then we'll do a review on, on the channel moving forward. So um, I'm really glad that you all are here. I'm really glad I feel the love of God here in the in the live chat with you all. Um, that makes me so happy to see that you all are being loving and supporting of one another. And I'm glad that even even though sometimes you have uh, different ideas, I'm glad that you're able to to do it respectfully. We're learning a lot from this se second season that we should hold back from from judging others. <clears throat> that we should hold back from wanting to act out on our very first initial instinct that comes up whenever we're spat at, either literally or figuratively speaking. When someone looks down on us and calls us names, we always want to move in and say, well, let me do something. And Christ says, hey, hang on, hang on. Why? Why is that important? What happened here with, with the Sons of Thunder is that sometimes we're representing him. And if we let atheists or let anyone else anger us to the point where we're either swearing at them or in any form offending them or abusing them physically or, or verbally or mentally, then we're undoing the seeds that he's planting. We're undoing the work that he's done because it's going to be harder for that. When in turn... If we show love, if we show compassion towards those who offend us, if we love our neighbor as we've been called to love, to love our neighbor, then we're helping his, his uh, word come out through our actions. And, and the father is getting known through our actions. And, it's, and we're planting those little seeds with Christ. Sooner or later, someone will say, hey, what is it about you that is just different? I, I was mean to you and you didn't treat me the way that I treated you when I deserved to be to be yelled at, to be treated this way. What is it that's so different? And you say, hey, I'd like to invite you to church one day to come and see what's so different. Or I'd like to maybe share uh, a, a series called The Chosen with you to see if, so that you can see why I, I, I am the way that I am. And it's not because I'm special or anything. It's because of him, because of what he's done. And sooner or later, that little that little seed that you planted years ago or months ago or weeks ago suddenly starts to crack open and a little, we get a little sprout coming out, right? So that's why this is important. Okay, so anyway, enough of Leonardo and more of Jesus. And here we go. Let's watch uh, episode two. It's called I Saw You uh, on the Angel Studios site. Here we go. I need the seawater for the cement leontes. It will take three days. You can't stop construction for three days. Is it because I'm Jewish? <laughs> no, that I know it's not because you're Jewish. I've been telling you, and anyone I can get to listen. I even told the prince. 
I need that salt water that the cement won't set to full strength. Seawater's heavy. It's hard to move. Understand? Plans are hard to draw, bedrock hard to reach. It's all hard. But your incompetence is making it harder. Careful. Hey, I'm just telling it like it is. Three days, Nathaniel. You're in no position to make demands. You're lucky enough to have That's this why job. why I have to demand what I need, Leontis. Do you know how hard I've worked to earn a Roman commission as a Jew? You're a child that skipped the line. The men don't respect you for that. Skipped the line? Just because I was smart enough to go to school instead of getting mud. Twenty men show up every day. Who cares what they think? I care. They need to share a vision. They need to each do their jobs. The day laborer, the craftsman, the foreman, and the architect. Yes. In concert with me. Who do you think you are? I am the foreman here. You think that if everyone would just do it your way, that it will all turn out. I mean, he is, he is the designer. Well, people have their own ideas. No ruling, do you hear me? It's over! All right, Familia, you know what the deal is. Let's go. There you go, we got baby Ezekiel in the house dancing as well. Let's go. What do you mean two days work? He said to leave enough firewood for the next weary traveler. You heard that, John? Mm-hmm. What if there isn't enough? Used up all the dry stuff. Well, it's good to have some strong bodies around like the Sons of Thunder here. <laughs> you told him? Don't worry. He made himself look just as bad as you did. Hey. Who is that? Maybe it's a scout from... Where are we, Serushia? Maybe he's just walking. No one just walks in the Bashan. I mean, he no looks like he's us. just walking. Shh, shh. Don't come any closer! <laughs> he's Jewish. You think? What do you want? <laughs> For the Romans to go away? <laughs> Pretty wife someday. <laughs> I ate a fattened goose once. I love that again. You followers of the rabbi Jesus of Nazareth. Don't say anything. Could be a spy. Spying for whom? For what? There are spies. But they're not smart enough to dress like this. <laughs> are you Simon? Son of Jonah? Who are you? You're new at this. I get it. Once you've followed your rabbi for long enough, you won't even blink when a strange man such as myself walks out of the woods with a message he can only give to Jesus directly. Yeah, we are pretty new. Doesn't make us dumb. We can't let you see the rabbi without knowing your business. I can't say. If you want to send me away, fine. Say hello to my friend Andrew for me, though. What do you think? I don't know. Bring him in, I guess. Let Jesus figure it out. <clears throat> Something's not sitting right with Simon. Andrew has friends. <laughs> Andrew has friends. Hey! There he is! <laughs> wow! He's not terrible. Uh, what did you expect, huh? Come on! <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Come inside now. 
Yeah, he has friends. Never mentioned a Philip when we were there. You'll find this shocking, but I have a whole life that doesn't revolve around you. You know, you could be a little less you. <laughs> Fair enough. You take it to him. Make nice. <laughs> Back five minutes. Philip. <laughs> Philip. <sighs> You'll never know when you get to sleep next. <laughs> so he takes advantage of sleep. <sighs> Any chance he gets. Water. Take advantage when you've got either one. Thank you. Sounds like you're in a war out there with creepy with John the Baptist. <laughs> no. War has rules. What did you find? Nothing suitable. Of course you didn't find any. Where did you look? The east. One mile. That's the ravine. Anything you'd find there would be wet. Yes, I discovered that. But there was wood? It was wet. That's Matthew. He checks the ravines for wood. Probably fishes in the desert, too. <laughs> Come on, man. Good work, Matthew. Thank you. Who are you? Huh? Yeah, we like Philip. <laughs> I'm the guy who drives wood. Now, if only you had an arsenal of weapons, we could do it in the manner of Ezekiel. How did Ezekiel drive wood? No, it's, it's a prophecy against Gog and Magog. And then those who dwell in the cities of Israel will go out and make fires of the weapons and burn them. Shields, Shields and, and bucklers, bows and arrows, clubs and spears, and, and they will make fires of them for seven years so that they will not need to take wood out of the fields or cut down any out of the forests. For they will make their fires of the weapons. Shall we? Hey. Keep the fire going. Hmm. He is destroyed. Your strongest. And <laughs> something wrong, friend. Yes. Did someone die? Yes. I'm sorry for your loss. Was it sudden? <laughs> I think it was a long time coming for him. But it felt sudden. Ooh. Tell me about him. He was an architect. That's what he wanted to be his whole life. Sad. He came from nothing. Worked his way up. Loved God. He wanted to build synagogues eventually. I, I no, that's not very popular around here. <laughs> One with colonnades that sing, parapets that practically pray, vaunted halls that draw the soul upward to God. That's what God made him for. Thank you. 
That's what God made him for, he says. So I thought. He sounds like an ambitious guy. What did he die of? Hubris. <laughs> it's me, by the way. <laughs> I'm the dead man in the story. Yeah. yeah. I got that. Just wanted to be clear. <laughs> Did you learn to dry wood before or after you started following John? What's up with you and Simon? <laughs> he doesn't like me. He sees me as his enemy. Why? As a tax collector. Mm hmm. He's all, okay. He's everyone's enemy. That doesn't shock you. I was something else once, too. Mm. Once you've met the Messiah, Am is all that matters. Ooh. Next ah. time he rides you, remind him that the people out there, they want to define us by our past. Yes. Our sins. Mm. Out there, where? With the sleepers. <laughs> but we're different. The sleepers. They're awake. I don't understand. Well, you haven't felt any relief except with him, have you? Your rabbi? No. I don't expect to. How did you memorize prophecy? In Hebrew school, like all Jewish boys, didn't you? I started, but then I skipped ahead. Skipped ahead? Never heard of anyone skipping ahead. What did they do that for? I was sent to apprentice under a bookkeeper. Were you that good with numbers or that bad with Torah? I was proficient <laughs> in both. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> How old when you skipped ahead? Eight. Eight? I showed unusual promise. I bet you did. I showed unusual promise. How come you never circled back to Torah? I was paraded before the magistrate. Rome offered me higher wages than the annual income of my father and three of his brothers combined. Bought my first house when I was 13. Why did you need to buy a house? My father kicked you out. I don't blame him. I, I thought you said he's a man. He acted by man's standards. Everybody in your old life is playing a different game than you now. Do you get it? No. Everyone speaks in riddles. I can understand esoteric ideas. They're not beyond me. Of course not. You'll probably pick it up faster than the rest of us. I'm sorry, man. I don't mean to sound like an oracle here. It's a force of habit. Spend all your time with a rogue preacher in the wilderness and you get to be a little obtuse. <laughs> They're simple ideas for complicated people. I just... In your obtuse language... <laughs> here's a circle. It represents everything in the world and all the people that have ever been. And that's me. That's how I feel. Well said. Good for you. And yes, I've been living literally outside this circle with John the Outcast for a couple of years, so I can relate. You're fine, Matthew. Stick around. You're going to be all right. Stick around, you're gonna be all right. I find it uh, interesting, like the challenge between like either everybody else changes their language so that Matthew can can feel uh, a part of it, or he change he starts looking and understanding their obtuse language, right? And he's he he's put it into practice. He said, "This is a circle. This represents everything," because he's not about. His, his way of thinking isn't about um, figurative. It isn't figurative, right? He likes things to be direct and to, to, 
He doesn't like when you when you use something to describe something or to represent something. He's like, I don't get it. He likes to be very specific and to the point, right? And he just practiced it just now. He practiced it just now. Anyway, I, I love that. I love that the music quieted it down. It's just him and God right now and his feelings. Blessed are you. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. Here is Raya, the Lord is our God. Give my prayer, O oh Lord. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. This was done for you. Do not hide your face from me. Do you see me? Oh, goodness. Do you see me? Oh, that was so great. Great acting. The perfect emotion. that for? Turns a blade into a razor for logs. Protects your hands. Thank you. I love how he showed him first. There you go. <laughs> I, I've never done manual labor before. He must have worked pretty hard to avoid it. <laughs> That's behind you now, too. <laughs> Got to lean into it. You must Let have worked really hard to avoid it. Laugh at someone's jokes and then tell jokes. Do you know any? Only what? Jokes. So... Was it difficult to leave it all behind? No. It should have been. I was comfortable. I had a dog. <laughs> Bold. I like it. It was a source of amusement for others. My house was bought with flood money. My parents and I haven't spoken much in years. 
And numbers didn't make the world clear anymore. You gave everything away to keep it. Numbers it's didn't make the world nobody clear. Likes me. If this rabbi Jesus of Nazareth called you, it means you already have everything you need for right now. I'll give you the rest in time. I just don't know what he sees in me. He's a religious teacher, and I know very little about religion. From what I understand, Jesus doesn't love everything about religion. Matthew, what you think you know doesn't matter. <laughs> Only that Jesus chose you. <laughs> That's where your confidence comes from now. Ooh, message. I know he knows what he's doing. Just wish I did. Skipped out of Hebrew school at eight. I think you'll catch on. <laughs> Here's an easy one. If somebody asks you to tell a joke, tell them you have a vegetable joke. But it's corny. <laughs> 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 he didn't get it. <laughs> we'll work on it. I feel like Matthew's like my mom sometimes. I have to sit and explain a joke that is, you think it's obvious. You think that it's very obvious, but she needs it explained before she can give it a good laugh. And sometimes two explanations before she goes, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> no. What is this about? Is he burying himself under the ashes or is it like some kind of, I don't know, tradition to do that? Does it have like a religious symbolism? you? No, I remember your face. You were standing with Andrew the day I was baptized by John. Ah. How was my old cousin? I shouldn't call him old. We're the same age. Uh, his reputation with Rome is down, but his spirits are up. Sounds about right. He sends me with a message. Hmm. Wants me to tell you something on my behalf. That's good, because I have something to say to you, too. It's a very short message. <laughs> Only two words. Mine is also short. Follow I me. I will. <laughs> so John thinks you're ready? Yes. He spoke with someone. Shall we? John spoke to someone the last time he was in prison. Someone? A Pharisee. He had been troubled by a miracle he witnessed in the Red Quarters in Capernaum. Ah, yes. I know this man. <laughs> you know him? Yes. I might even call him a friend. John told me to expect anything, to expect nothing, but I think he'd be troubled to know that you were friends with a Pharisee. <laughs> I'll get over it. Well, then we received word of what you did in Cana. Hmm. That was all John needed to hear. He sends his love. And you? Meager offering. Hardly meager. You will be the most experienced of all my followers. John is hardly standard procedure. Even better. <laughs> if I may be so bold. What are your intentions here in Bashan? Just passing through. 
to Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea for one night, and then we'll continue north into Syria. Syria? That's right. I heard you were just in Samaria and now to Syria. You and John are really cut from the same cloth. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you each had a death wish. I wouldn't exactly call it a wish. But a what? A death what? It's nothing. I'm still thinking through how to talk about it. That's why I was gone for a couple of days. A lot on my mind. Yes. Mm. I can imagine. In Syria, will we go to Damascus? Antioch? Not to the big cities, no. To the smaller places. Mm. I'll wake him later. <laughs> Should get some sleep, Philip. We've got a long road ahead of us tomorrow. I'll turn the fire. Yes, Rabbi. Right, Rabbi, one last thing. Yes. If there's time, I have a friend in Caesarea who I haven't seen in quite some time. Your friend lives in a Roman city? He's an architect. Ah. If there's time, I'd love <laughs> of to. Of course, of course. <laughs> Only if there's time. Listen, if we don't make time for friends, we won't have any. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Philip. Morning. Good morning. Did I sleep late? The sun is hardly up. Oh, my back. <laughs> it gets easier. <laughs> A little. You get used to it. Are you packing? I am. I pack every morning now. I never know if we'll be somewhere for a night or a week. That sounds hard. I didn't think about how this would really work. I think everyone's struggling with that. In some way. In some way. How about you? Mary? Wasn't it exciting yesterday when the men began reciting prophecy? And uh, a little intimidating. <laughs> Yes, we need to catch up. Okay. How? I can't read. I'll teach you how to read and write. Oh. Where would we get materials? Leave it to me. I know who to ask. I am thankful before you, living and enduring king. For you have mercifully restored my soul within me. Great is your faithfulness. It's more than two days worth. Ah, it's wet. No, it's damp. Good morning. Good morning, boys. <sighs> that stuff will smoke something terrible if you light it now, but a nightfall. You did well. I didn't do it. No, then who? Our young smart friend. Thomas? No. Uh, Thomas? Who's Thomas? Ah. <laughs> the way he pointed at him. <laughs> Still learning everyone's names. That reminds me of a time with John. Simon calls him Creepy John. <laughs> no, that's Why do you have to? <laughs> so, the flock was evading Roman patrols moving up and down the Jordan. You were on the run? One day, John started addressing us by name. 
Zachariah, Tobias, Mikael. We all start looking around at each other like, who is he talking to? And then we realize we don't know each other's names. We'd been out there for months, and we only knew each other's nicknames or aliases. How is John? Same old John. He's proud of you. I can tell you that much. Like a father. Mm. I think it's nap time. Wake me if there's work to do, boys. And, uh, thank Matthew if you see him. John remembers me. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, I thought that might be what you were doing. Hiding? No. Writing. Are you hiding? Philip <laughs> says I don't Are have you? to do that anymore. Ah, it's a new guy. I like him already. Everybody does. He's like Simon, but not like Simon. <laughs> What are you writing? Just taking notes on what I see. This. I'm used to writing daily now. Began as a chore, but it's become a habit. I think prayer is like that. At first, anyway. And the way Rabbi taught me. Now I love it. In the short time that I have followed, People have quarreled over things Jesus said, remembered things differently, and disputed his meaning. I think it's best we have a written record to refer back to. Everything he says and does? Yes. That's not a good idea. Why? We have enemies. There are people trying to trap Jesus in his words. They could twist something he said to defame him. Have you thought about that? They will find it easier to twist something he is reported to have said than if it is confirmed in writing. That's not how the world works. People can twist words however they want. But it's clearly written. Yeah, I bet as clear as the last time I saw you writing in your journal, spying on me for the Romans. Hey, tranquilo, tranquilo. I think I came here to thank you. We could add paranoid to the list of... <laughs> people out there want to define all of us by our pasts. But we do things differently because of him. He's learning. For the record, it's a bad idea. Write that down. <laughs> we head out in an hour. <laughs> He's not wrong. Just be careful. Adios. Okay. Is my brother slowing it down back here? Always. Hey! <laughs> He's like, hey! You watch Simon and we were friends. Foot race? We'll settle this once and for all. Uh, race yourself to the front. Big James is asking for a leaf on that cart. Already? I thought we called him Big for a reason. Yeah, that's why <laughs> the longest. Come on, you're up. I'll be up next, Andrew. No, 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 you don't need to. Uh, I want to. You shouldn't. Well, let me tell you something. Some days I miss manual labor. Fewer questions, less speculation, honest sweat. Time to get honest, Andrew. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. shalom. You know, it's funny. I would have thought that the keeper of the shifts would have been Matthew's job, not yours. Why is that? He thinks in divisions, calculation, order. Yeah, I've noticed. Speaking of Matthew, I wanted to tell you. He's writing down everything you do. Of course he is. <laughs> and that's fine with him. He is. He's an accountant. He's taking account. Good to know. You strike me as someone who acts on instinct, feeling. Yeah, but I do think... No, I think all the time. That's what I was hoping to talk to you about. You were? Yeah, I've been thinking. The group is growing every day. And with greater numbers come more opinions and perspectives. And sure. We're all unified behind you. You're all unified. 
<laughs> we all agree on you. But sometimes you're away, and during those times, we don't have your authority to defer to. We have my instructions. Yeah. Oh. We have a goal or instruction or someplace to go, but how we get there, how we achieve it, sometimes there's a lot of noise. So what are you suggesting? Uh, I'm suggesting we formalize a structure. For what? For how decisions are made, how plans are formed, and what is the process for raising objections to those plans? When and how mm -hmm. they are vocalized, and to whom? Hmm. Such as how you sent little James and John ahead to Syria to prepare. We can schedule that in advance. Or for instance, maybe all contrary ideas are rooted through Big James, filtered, and then brought to me for consideration. Just thinking out loud here. Simon, I love how you are trying to make things better for the whole group. <laughs> you could stand to be a little nicer sometimes, but you're a leader. You always have been, and always will be. I cherish that in you, and I will need it. I will need it in time. Every one no, no. of these people has <laughs> called for a reason. Each of them brings something unique and important to the whole. I want every voice heard and none silenced. Everyone can learn from each other. Yes, but some people are troubled with tiny things and they slow us down. I won't ask who you mean by that. Mm -hmm. But I will say, if someone is thinking about things you feel slow everyone down, maybe you need to slow down. Wow. One day, Simon, there will need to be more structure and I see you playing a big part in it. Out of all humility, Rabbi, why not now? <laughs> more structure today. Because I am still here. Yes, of course you're still here. Are you saying one day you won't be? <laughs> it's a conversation for another time. But we will talk about it. I think so. Soon. <laughs> ah, there's that word soon it's the most imprecise thing in the world yeah what is soon a few hours a few days years a hundred years a thousand years <laughs> ask my father in heaven how long a thousand years is then talk to me about soon mm -hmm. where are you going to leave andrew the cart but it's not your time <laughs> I tried to tell my mother at Cana how much good did it do? <laughs> That's true. That's true. I want to make a shirt that says Simon Security Services. <laughs> Mary, Mama, something wrong? Nothing wrong. Uh, I wanted to ask a favor. Of course. Can I borrow a tablet? Did Simon put you up to this? No. I'm going to teach Rima how to read. We want to study Torah. That's what I want to do. Well, they don't allow women in the Bet Midrash. How can I get to the scrolls? I could copy them for you. That's either really long. <laughs> Maybe we could ask Philip what is the most important part. I'm pretty sure it's all important. We don't even know where to start. I'll ask Philip. Why Philip? He's kind to me. That is too. I'm sorry, they're the exception, Matthew. I'll talk to Philip. <clears throat> Everything good up here? Yes. We're going to study Torah. Who? You and Mary? And Matthew. <laughs> Matthew doesn't know anything about Torah. How do you know what Matthew knows? That's the point. And you don't read? I was sent to Hebrew school like you, so that's exactly what I'll learn from Mary first. It's not like we're trying to be teachers or anything. We just want to learn more. Have you taken your shift with the cart yet? Huh? Anything you need to know, you can always ask me. Mm -hmm. 
be happy to answer any questions. You know that, right? Of course. Good. <laughs> Awkward. My turn with the card. <clears throat> Passage to memorize. Anything that would get me started. To make up for lost time. No, Matthew, you didn't lose any time. It just got rearranged. Gaining it all back now. Mm. But in the meantime, I, I want to understand the same things you do. And everyone else. No. It doesn't happen overnight. Look, there it is! Ah, Cesaria Philippi, my namesake. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Philip the Tetrarch, brother of Herod Antipas. Family that does not take kindly to my former rabbi. Why? Well, John criticizes them for things like killing their own sons and marrying their own nieces, things like this. I suppose he should. <laughs> Welcome to the empire. Of course, you should know more about this than any of us. No offense. I'm going to go up ahead. Passage to memorize. I'll work on this. I like Philip. He's kind. Nathaniel! Hey, Nathaniel, it's me, Philip. Nathaniel! Nathaniel. 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 Hey. Hey. Are you sick? What's going on? Flip? Sick ah. of this world is what he is. Why are you in <laughs> What happened, my friend? Are you okay? Sure. I. We need to get you some water. I am truly sorry, my friend. No one was killed. It could have been worse. I could be in prison. I'm still proud of you. I've lived through you at times. You know that? Through me? Yes. I'm living through you, man. I mean it. What part? Going to classes endlessly. Dealing with bureaucrats day in and day out. I skip that part. <laughs> I mean the part about building something with your own hands. I had a calling. I don't regret it, but while you were in the city being validated by top professionals. I was in the wilderness. A lot of yelling. I don't deny occasionally being jealous that you had actual physical evidence to show for your efforts. A pile of rubble. You don't know what your impact was or will be. I have a good idea what it'll be. A cold day in Gehenna before they hire another Jew. I thought I knew where God was putting me to. Yeah. So what are you doing? <laughs> I thought you were out making enemies all over the place. I'm about <laughs> to make a whole lot more enemies all over the place. John sent me to someone new. Well, you sure know how to pick him. He's not just anyone. That's what you said about the baptizer. And I was right. But this is... More. Mm. This is who the baptizer has been preparing us for. Mm. Nathaniel. He's the one. The one. The one who Moses foretold and the prophet said would come. The one. The one. 
The one. Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. Nazareth. <laughs> Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Come and see. Oh, <laughs> little dump on a craggy hilltop. I'm serious. No paved roads, no public buildings. <laughs> they barely have a synagogue. You can't. You really can't. Hey, I'm just telling it like it is. Why can't I do that? Can't She's you? a tell it like <laughs> it is. <laughs> Sleep under the same roof as their livestock. Listen to me. Honestly, wow. what I'm saying the one is a Nazarene is practically heresy. Just come and see. That's all he could say. Come and see. What? Gonna be late for work? <laughs> That's dark. <laughs> so dark. Your whole life. You've wanted to serve God, to meet the Son of God, the King of Israel. I promise you will not regret it. And if you do, I'll refund your misery. <laughs> I know you. You don't mess around. You will want to join him. He's like no rabbi who ever has been or will be. I've never seen you talk like this. I'm still hung up on the Nazareth of it all. <laughs> Come and see. Rabbi, well, this is a good night. You know who stands beside you there? This is my friend, Nathaniel. Yes, the truth teller. I'm sorry? Man is often deceitful. And Israel began with Jacob, a bit of a deceiver, yes? Yes. But one of the great things about you is you are a true Israelite and whom there is no deceit. What did you say about me? <laughs> what is this? How do you know me? I have known you long before Philip called you to come and see. Long okay. before he told you to come and see. When you were in your lowest moment, and you were alone, I did not turn my face from you. Mm. I saw you <laughs> under the fig tree. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine that? You are the son of God, the king of Israel. <laughs> I knew it. Well, that didn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't mess around. Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, you believe? <laughs> <laughs> you are going to see many greater things than that. Like Jacob, you are going to see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. That's me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Just so we're clear? I got that. Good. I know you like to be clear. <laughs> Rabbi! Sorry to interrupt, but... John just arrived with a message from Syria. He came back? Yeah. He said people are already gathering to meet you. Many with afflictions to be healed. Your fame is spreading. The good kind. You should rest, Rabbi. We should leave early. 
Thank you, boys. I think the message there is that he knows you, right? He knows you. So, you wanted to help build something that would cause prayer and songs, something to bring souls closer to God, yes? Can you start tomorrow? <laughs> ah, I love it. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's the best. Familia, thank you all so much for joining me. I'm I'm not a, I'm not sure if I'm going to come back with episodes three and four today. Um, you will know shortly. Uh, if I do, it won't be until about maybe an hour and a half. Hey there, it's Dallas again. Oh, Dallas again. Hello. You are about to watch episode three, which happens to be one. Just one second, Dallas. Sorry. Um, not sure if we're going to come back and 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 see it, but um, if we do, it's going to be about an hour and a half because I need to get something to eat and uh, sort of stretch. I know you all need to stretch. Um, if we do come back, it'll be in an hour and a half. If not, I will see you all tomorrow. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. Before you log out, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for bringing peace to the live chat. I love that you all are, are so loving and so kind to one another. It's exactly what, what I want to see, and it's exactly what God wants to see. And I'm pretty sure that he is pleased with the way that we're handling ourselves and handling uh, one another. Um, I want to say thank you to, to Angel Studios for sponsoring the channel, and thank you for, um, for allowing us to, to watch this again. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank you for the time that you're, that you're uh, dedicating to this. Um, I'm pretty sure that we will be back, but just if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification, because as soon as I decide, I'm going to post it. And then you'll see, and then you'll have it ready. You'll get the bell notification, right? So um, appreciate you all so much. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to get together one more time um, to to hear your hear the story of your son deeper and to go deeper into his his teachings. Thank you so much for blessing uh, Dallas Jenkins and and the whole team with uh, with with the lighting and the the resources that they need to be able to tell the story, not just to tell the story, but to tell the story at the level that they are doing. The cinematography is worthy of, of you and the direction is worthy of you, the acting, everything that went into, into place to be able to tell this beautiful story here is, is by far what you deserve the, the best, the best. I'd like to thank you so much for bringing us together and for allowing us to see this story and for bringing people who are new to, to La Familia and uh, people who are hurting, people who you know just needed to hear and see this, uh, this story and to be moved again. Some of us need a reminder that you are here for us, that you work for us, that you're always working for us and that you're always providing even when we do not see it. Even when we do not deserve it, you are providing. And we'd like to thank you so much. Uh, please continue to keep us safe, safe from the dark ones, safe from, from evil, safe from temptation. Uh, in your son's name we pray. Amen. Hope to see you soon, familia. Thank you all so much. You are loved. You are loved here. And you're welcome here anytime. We'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>